in this video we are going to study about the anatomy of the heart and some of the components of the cardiovascular system so as you know there are three main components or structure in the cardiovascular system we have the heart blood vessels and the blood so mainly in this video we are going to discuss about the heart its external features and the internal features heart pumps the blood to the various part of the body to fulfill the nutritional requirement and remove the metabolic waste from the body so this is the main function of the heart and before going in detail we should know about the systemic and the pulmonary circulation what is the systemic circulation and what is the pulmonary circulation in the systemic circulation you will see the blood so from the left ventricle the blood is going into the ascending aorta and through the ascending aorta or the branches of the ascending aorta or through the descending aorta this blood will reach up to the various part of the body or all the tissues of the body and after that this venous blood will collected and through the superior and the inferior vena cava again it will come to the right atrium of the heart so this is the deoxygenated blood okay so so we have started from the left side of the heart and reaching to the right side of the heart it means first we have uh, collected the oxygenated blood and it is going to the various part of the body and through the various part of the body and uh, through the superior and the inferior vena cava it is coming to the right atrium of the heart so this is the deoxygenated blood now and from the right atrium the blood is going to the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve so from here the pulmonary circulation will start so blood from the right ventricle in this picture also you can see the blood from the right ventricle now it is going to the pulmonary trunk through the pulmonary valve and through the right and left pulmonary artery it is re reaching up to the lungs and in the lungs it will get oxygenated and through the four pulmonary veins this blood oxygenated blood will, will come into the left atrium and from the left atrium this blood again coming to the left ventricle okay so this is the systemic circulation and the pulmonary circulation now we will discuss about the external features of the heart or gross anatomy so heart is a conical hollow muscular organ and it is situated in the middle mediastinum just behind the sternum the weight if you will see this is 300 gram in male and 250 gram in female it consists of four chambers two atria and two ventricles and also you will see it has the apex which is directed downward and toward the left side and it lies in the fifth left fifth intercostal space and base is directed backwards and mainly formed by the left atrium and partly by the right atrium also now we will see the chambers as we discussed there are four chambers in the heart at the right atrium right ventricle left atrium and the left ventricle and these chambers are divided by the grooves or sulci we call it as sulci or grooves so you can see there are divisions are there between the atrium and the ventricles and these are the atrioventricular groove and this atrioventricular groove will divide the atrium from the ventricle and again further they are divided by the anterior and the posterior part okay so anterior side we have the anterior atrioventricular groove and the posterior side we have the posterior atrioventricular groove that we will see in the next picture and interatrial groove will divide the two atrium then we have the interventricular groove they are also divided by the anterior and the posterior part so anterior side we have the anterior interventricular groove and posterior side we have the posterior interventricular groove so in this picture only we can see this thing this yellow color line this is the anterior atrioventricular groove and this is the anterior interventricular groove which will divide the right ventricle from the left ventricle so anterior side we can see these two groups now again this is the picture from the inferior side so you can see the base and the inferior surface of the heart so now we can see the 
right posterior atrioventricular groove this is the right posterior atrioventricular groove which will divide the right atrium from the right ventricle and this is we have the left posterior atrioventricular groove which will divide the left atrium from the left ventricle and then we have the interventricular groove which will divide the left ventricle from the right ventricle okay so this is the posterior interventricular groove because we are seeing the posterior side now we'll see the sum of the features of the interior of the right atrium so this is the very important part of the heart so we should study in detail it has the rough anterior wall this wall you can see this is cut it from here so this is the rough anterior wall and it has the smooth posterior wall the rough anterior wall you will see the thick muscular ridge that is known as the crista terminalis and if you will see from this side it will extend from the superior vena cava to the inferior vena cava and externally you will see a sulcus that is produced due to the crista terminalis that is known as the sulcus terminalis also you will see the some transversely running muscle fibers roughly muscle fibers these are known as the musculi pectinity that will extend from the crista terminalis and coming downward and toward the left toward the atrioventricular orifice these are known as the musculi pectinity or pectinate muscles so this anterior rough wall is due to the musculi pectinity and the crista terminalis in the posterior smooth wall <coughs> In the posterior smooth wall, we will see the number of openings. So, in the upper and the posterior part, you will see the opening of the superior vena cava, and in the lower and the posterior part, you will see the opening of the inferior vena cava, and this opening is guarded by the eustachian wall. So, in the fetal life, this wall will guard the blood from the right atrium to the left atrium. Then. third opening is the coronary sinus which will open between the inferior vena cava and the tricuspid wall and this opening is also guarded by the thebesian wall now you will see a sickle shape or this oval shape impression or thumb like impression on the septal wall that is the fossa ovalis and it is derived from the septum primum and above this opening you will see a thick ridge that is known as the limbus fossa ovalis and this is derived from the septum secundum now we will see very important triangle that is known as the triangle of koch why this triangle is important because you will see the location of the av node into this triangle so we should know about the boundaries of the triangle of koch so we have the anterior side we have the base of the tricuspid wall so this picture you can see this is the tricuspid wall here so this is the base of the tricuspid wall and below we have the opening of the coronary sinus here opening of the coronary sinus and posterior side we have the tendon of todero what is this tendon of todero nothing but sub endocardial ridge so these are, are the three boundaries of the triangle of koch and why it is important because you will see the av node inside this so this is the location for the av node now we are moving toward the interior of the right ventricle so we have studied the right atrium now we will study the right ventricles in the right ventricle also you will see the two part you have the this is the inflow part this full is the inflow part why the, this is inflow because blood will come from the right atrium to the right ventricle through the tricuspid wall so this is known as the inflow part and it has the smooth outflow part because the blood will go from this part to the pulmonary trunk through the pulmonary wall okay so this is the inflow part is rough and outflow part is smooth why this part is rough because of presence of the trabeculae carnei so what are these we will see in the next slide and these outflow and the inflow part they are separated by the muscular ridge that is known as the supraventricular crest so the supraventricular crest 
will it is a partition between the or you can say it lies between the tricuspid valve and the pulmonary valve and also you will see the interior side you have the tricuspid valve and the pulmonary valve so this is the tricuspid orifice guarded by the tricuspid valve and pulmonary orifice guarded by the pulmonary valve now you will see the inflow part shows the muscular ridges and these muscular ridges are also known as the trabeculae carnea and these you will see the three types of muscular ridges in the interior of the right ventricle okay and these are the ridges so first one is the ridges what is the example of ridges is the supraventricular crest second is the bridges bridges means it form the bridge so two ends will be stable okay so what is the example example is the moderator band so this is the moderator band which will extend from the septal valve to the base of the papillary muscle and it will provide passage for the right bundle branch okay so it will provide passage for the right bundle branch that's why moderator band is important also you will see the pillars third part that is the pillars are formed by the papillary muscles so we have the three types of muscular ridges you should remember ridges bridges and the pillars ridges are the supraventricular crest bridges is the moderator band pillars are the by the papillary muscles and you will see the three types of papillary muscle in the right ventricle and two types of papillary muscle in the left ventricle so three types of papillary muscle is the anterior posterior and the septal so this is the anterior papillary muscle this is the posterior papillary muscle anterior papillary muscle will attach to the anterior wall of the right ventricle posterior muscle attach to the posterior part and septal muscle will attach to the septum okay so these are the three types of papillary muscles and now you see the each papillary muscle will attach to the tricuspid valve through this thread like structure these are the chordae tendinae so apex of the papillary muscles of each papillary muscle will attach to the tricuspid valve through the chordae tendinae and what they will do they will prevent the back flow of the tricuspid valve or the blood toward the right atrium so they will prevent the regurgitation of the blood and all these valves if you will see they are the unidirectional so they will provide the unidirectional flow thank you for watching the video